Welcome back to The Fifth Down. I am your co-host, Cody McKeague, and with me today are the boys of The Fifth Down, Jared Chirai, Jalen Holston, Nolan Chang. Say what's up to the pod, boys. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Uh, listen, listen, guys. Here's the deal, okay? <laughs> here's, here's the real deal, Banana Peel. We got some business to take care of. I made some allegations that Shake and Bake was going to get it done against the Florida Niners. So we can get that one. man. This. Old shots out the way. All right, so here's here's numero uno. I'm going to keep going as we do our intro, but great job to, to the great Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> Brock Purdy, I know you're on my bench right now. I know. I know, buddy. But listen, that three-week stretch was – that three-week stretch almost cost us. If I didn't put Sherbert in, we would not be in the playoff hunt right now. So you need to – you just buck up and be a good team player, okay? All right. But hi him, everybody. I gotta give you your props, man. I was, I almost forgot that that was happening today. So that was a man move right there to start it off right that way. Uh, Someone's but anyway, on be- Thanksgiving break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you damn right, for real. Uh, before you we talk about what's going on, damn right. <laughs> in the NFL, we have to give our shout out to our partners over at W Energy. Much like our favorite players and teams, we too experience lapses in focus and energy. However, thanks to this wonderful little energy powder, we have all of the, not only the natural boosting ingredients for energy, none of the dyes, none of the compromises, none of the extra filler stuff, and the added bonus of it tasting phenomenal. So whether you game, compete, work, or just need a boost of energy, head on over to W.GG. Use our promo code POINSOY, that's P-O-I-N-S-O-Y, for 10% off your order. You help us, you help them. Everyone wins except the Steelers. Anyway, uh, let's talk about weeks. <laughs> let's talk about week eleven NFL football, boys. I know there was a lot uh, to get into, but before we kind of start off, uh, just rambling on what happened in week eleven, I kind of want to throw out some of the major injuries that did happen over this week. Obviously, there are a couple season-ending ones. Joe Burrow knocked out for the season uh, with a wrist injury. Safety Halanoa Tufanga from the 49ers knocked out with a torn ACL. And safety Taylor Rapp, who was uh, carted off for the Bills because of a neck injury, obviously with the DeMar Hamlin uh, kind of injury from last year. A lot of scary stuff happening uh, uh, over there on the Bills field. Um, It's a lot of big injuries. Throwing out to you guys. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean obviously mark andrews is another big one as well um i'm gonna throw it out to you guys i mean how do you think this fares for their teams um with them being injured like this obviously Bengals, i think <sighs> kind of the big That's elephant the big in the room right? there yeah, yeah. yeah. those I, of you who are demar chase on, good luck out yeah. there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> i feel sick for Bengals fans uh, I will yeah. copy a, a, a sentiment that I also felt with my dear co-host, Nick Wright. I know he does. He's not on the show right now, but, you know, sometimes he pops in. We're good <laughs> friends. We text all the time. We're good Kansas City Chiefs fans, you know, the usual. But anyway, yeah. I, I agree that, like, I think this mishandling of this generational quarterback, like, the, it's 1A and 1B for a reason. Like, it's him and Patrick Mahomes by their GM and their management is inexcusable. I think it's horrific. And it's almost on the same level as Jim Irsay's handling of Andrew Luck. Like, you can't just shell this guy out there and not invest in his offensive line. Like, legitimately, Mm -hmm. you made one trade for one of our guys that we weren't that sold on, and he's got him hurt at this point. You know what I mean? You've got Jamar Chase. I think T. Higgins is solid, but you're not going to repay him. You're putting all the money in one guy in Jamar Chase. Got some good backfield issues that going on with Nixon and stuff. That's good combo there. But like, really like you just keep shoveling this guy out there without a solid backup quarterback to take the job, like a Chad Henney or, uh, you know, a Ryan Fitzpatrick of sorts. You know what I mean? Like there's no solid Mm -hmm. two option in case Joe does get hurt and you're basically left out to dry. And now your season's probably over. I mean, I've seen crazier things happen, right? We saw the Joe Flacco story with the Eagles. It's not impossible, Mm -hmm. but it, I mean, realistically you're playing in the AFC. You still got to go through some really, really good teams like Cleveland all of a sudden is great. And so are the Ravens and the Titans are starting to figure it out. Like, and the Texans, we can't act like they don't exist. You know what I mean? They exist. (laughs) Oh yeah. This maddening for Bengals fans. So I'm, that's, that's the one that probably hurts the most out of everyone. I know that bills uh, secondary isn't, great right now so they probably weren't looking forward to that injury for sure yeah i gotta echo everything that jalen just said obviously you're you're now stuck in this this team with the Bengals, where 
they didn't invest in having someone that was going to be a proper backup mm -hmm. and now they're stuck right they're they're stuck riding with, and by no stretch of the imagination i i would never have said that the bengals were out of like we're not going to be a contenders this year right with yeah. mm -hmm. a healthy burrow but here we are yeah there's even like a video floating around where you can see him saying to Lamar Jackson after the game, I felt a pop when he was throwing it. And I was like, ah, well, that's even more depressing. He knew when mm -hmm. it happened. But I think, it's, yeah, I think it's going to be a very big uh, league wide thing where now people are going to kind of really shell the money out to these backup quarterbacks or really try to invest in that so that it makes more sense. So that in the events in a game where injuries happen a dime a dozen, yeah, you need to be mm -hmm. prepared for all of that. And for the Bills, I mean, I I don't know what else to say other than Josh Allen's going to be more pissy on the sidelines when his defense ain't doing something. Um, and I, Damn I, right. I don't think that that team's going to be going anywhere fast. So, hey Jared, you have the floor now. I mean, Mark Andrews, Fisher Rudolph for the season. It looks like Isaiah Likely for the Ravens is going to take over as their second. Uh, option for tight end. Now he's going to be the first. What are, you, what are your What are your thoughts on Mark Andrews being out for the rest of the year? I mean, it's it's kind of. I would say it's big, but it's not as big as it would have been last year. I think last year he was more of a factor. He was bigger. Um, yeah, it just sucks wrong. because he's he's been a reliable um, target, kind of like how the, for the Chiefs, Kelsey's been a reliable target for for yep. them. And it's the same thing mm -hmm. in this. Uh, the tight end is literally. They're reliable target. I mean, Zay Flowers and with with Beckham Jr. like oh, them like stepping in and actually doing something now where where they're viable. It, it doesn't yeah. hurt as much, I would say. But I mean, Mark Andrews he he does just more than just catch balls too. He takes a lot of attention. He's a big dude. He he blocks well for them. He kind of like yeah, sets the pace of their offense blocker, yeah. and things. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, I think that hurts them. Like in in any other regard of we know Joe Burrow, we know like the Bills defense, like we had yeah. talked about it. We're not going to harp on it. But um, I think as, as far as other injuries, I think this is the, the next biggest one because, yeah. I mean, as a fantasy owner, it hurts me. But as, as, as a Ravens, like when you look at the Ravens, how we talked about like how we're not really like, like keen on Lamar right now. I think to yeah. take another weapon away from him is just going to make him that more predictable. His or main like weapon, what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so things like that. So, but, I mean, it's gonna hurt. Uh, I, I, they don't think the injury's as big as I think they thought it to be. So he, there is a possibility that he could return in a mm -hmm. deep playoff run. But I mean, still, it's kind of like one of those that like, you guys are just talking about Joe Burrow, like the, the protection and the safety of of their players. Uh, do they really force him back unless they're really gonna be in the Super Bowl? If not, yeah. then it's like you shut them down for the whole year just to, for the longevity of a of a great player. So. We're going to get into some of the uh, sort of rumors floating around. I was just curious to get you guys' thoughts on some of this. So J the Jets supposedly eyeing a big trade for Devontae Adams in the offseason. What do you guys think about them trying to get Aaron Rodgers' number one target? Especially with, one, Devontae Adams' asking price. Is that going to be worth it? And then on top of that, uh, Aaron Rodgers' questionable health. Look, <laughs> gentlemen. Talk to I've him, only been watching. Talk to I've, been, I've been only watching football for, you know. Religiously for, for for a couple of years now. For a year, <laughs> a couple of years. Now. Literally couple one years. year. Year and some change. Okay, just stop it's taking like six away. months. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Nine months. <laughs> Nine months. <laughs> what was my last three years? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's hyperbole to say that offense is what this team needs. Um, you really look at the performance of Zach Wilson, who is now benched. I don't think yeah, that Wilson was the 100% issue with how this offense was running. And I'd like to point to Exhibit A being the first four snaps of Aaron Rodgers' Jets career, being the O-line, not being able to block for him, and he had to scramble, and his Achilles thus popped. Now, I've been watching these Jets games because I have Garrett Wilson in my other league, and by the grace of God, I'm hoping that, you know, he gets some get some scraps you know hey, Doug. and there's a couple things i've noticed one zach wilson is always getting that cardio in because the o-line cannot block for him and i'm assuming and you i'll you know i'll make a gentleman's bet right now you're gonna see the same exact thing with uh who's the gentleman that's stepping in for him now tim boyle tim boyle 
Tim Boyle. Yeah, I guarantee Tim it's going to be the same thing, yeah. or he's just yeah. going to yeah, sit in the hockey boy. and get eaten alive. <laughs> um, and if you really look at how the performance of Zach Wilson when he is on is when he literally snaps the ball, takes one drop, and then chucks it straight to the, either his tight end Conklin or he comes in with the slot receiver that's coming across, which is sometimes Garrett Wilson. And it's because of those quick throws where there's not enough time for the O-line to actually reach or the, the rushes to actually reach him that he has that opportunity. And I don't think going to get Devontae Adams is going to be the answer. When you really look at Devontae Adams' game on the perimeter, he's the deep ball threat. You really think you're going to have that much time to throw it to that gentleman way out mm-hmm. there. You were not. You need to go bolster your O-line to protect what you have invested. Because now you're looking at the same season that we just have now with the Bengals, where your prize quarterback is out, and now you're trusting Zach Milf Hunter Wilson. I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, you know what, Nolan? I, I, I'm gonna I, take it a step further. Okay. No. You, because you can we can blame the O line. That's the obvious person to blame. <laughs> but yeah. really there's only one guy to blame. You have what supposedly a lot of analysts will call a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback that has too much ego to help and develop this Zach Wilson and teach him everything he knows, okay? Alex Smith, not quite a Hall of Famer, yeah? I think we can all probably agree, solid quarterback, but he's not putting the gold jacket on. But that guy tutored a young pup knowing he was going to take his job, and now we have 1A and 1B with him and Joe Burrow. We all know who I'm talking about here, supposedly. But... Imagine, like if Allen. you will, no, a scenario. Like, <laughs> I swear to God, he's the only Hawaii of Hawaii right it's now. Like, like, it's like Jalen is like two shots throat. deep right now, so I'm just playing. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But imagine you. a world where Aaron Rodgers wasn't a selfish, mushroom-eating weirdo hiding out in the woods and actually <laughs> invested in this kid. And what kind of Zach Wilson would we actually have with a terrible O-line to boot? Because Aaron Rodgers hasn't had the greatest of O-lines in Green Bay over his entire career, but he's still a rod. He's still that dude sometimes, right? Um, I think that also speaks volumes into why the benching of said Zach Williams, and they have this quarterback issue, and they have these offensive problems, because mm-hmm. I do think the weapons mm-hmm. are there holistically. You've got a great yeah. number one, you've got a solid-ish number two, and then you've got a great backfield and a great defense. O-line, you should have had a great man. number three with McCole Hardman, too. You should have had a great number mm-hmm. three, but you let him walk out the door, right? Because he wasn't getting enough snaps. Um, so there you go. But, yeah, it, you know, it, it is what it is. But that's, to me, I think that speaks more volumes than the offensive line problems. Mm-hmm. But those are more fixable than trying to convince a guy to drop his ego a little bit and teach a young guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Anyway, with that said, that'll do it for this episode of The Fifth Down. I know Jared got to get the hell out of here. So, boys, <laughs> any last nuggets before we bounce out? Jalen, Jared, good luck to the both of you and your head to head. Nolan, thank you. I'm rooting for you this week because <laughs> I'm rooting for me too. I'm rooting for all of us. I'll say this on pod: I'm rooting for all of us here to make it into the playoffs so that we at least have some fun, fun. playoff talk to talk it's about. Back to the and I don't matchups, yeah. right? Yeah, I was just like, and I don't want to start off with the whole um, what was it like our our little post season coach talk that we have if somebody gets eliminated. So. Hoping we all get into the playoffs there. Anybody else? <laughs> Last Nuggets. That's Good it. luck out there. Get out of here, it's, Jared. Get out of here. Go Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It, with that said, it's been a pleasure. It's been a joy. Fun of all us here at Point Soy. Good luck and love, everybody. Bang, bang. Choo, choo.